So let's look at what it takes to connect a popper coffee roaster, in this case, to artisan roast logging on the computer. And in this case, there's other options, but I chose Fidgets. Uh, we'll have the link to the Fidget set that they sell, um, which involves several pieces, actually just two. The thermocouple input it has space for four thermocouples, which is more than we need. The connector cable from that to the hub, and the hub goes to the USB on your computer. Um, I think it's way better to follow written instructions on this, so we will have those on our library site, and there'll be a link to explain the process of, of walking through what you do, what you'll see in photos. Um, but I'll show you just basically, so you have, of course, your thermocouples coming in here. Now these have to be stripped bare because uh, the thermocouples we sell have mini plugs, and this takes um, little screw connectors. So it goes to your computer. And here's just uh, so you know, here's the two boxes, but I'll show those uh, and update them. So I'm gonna go through this really quick, just so it's clear. There's two things you will download and those links will be on the page. The fidget control panel. And when I hook that up, I will see that I have the USB vent hub and the thermocouple shows up. That's all I really need here. Now, if you first do this and these are red, you need to update the firmware. You do that by double clicking on that. Okay. So we come over to Artisan and the first thing we do is we click on to activate it. And what we see is that the environmental temperature, bean temperature, these have uh, num numerical values. That means it's seeing the sensors. And when I start to roast, I will, or start to record, I will simply click start. And then down here, when I actually put my coffee in the roaster, so I'm recording now, but it hasn't started roasting, charge means you have put your batch into the roaster and you're starting to roast. Um, there's other buttons down here. Dry end is when it's browned or yellowed. First crack start, FC start, FC end, SC start, and then drop is when you finished roasting. So those are points you can mark. Then when you're done roasting, you will just simply click off. You can now, this would show a profile if I was actually roasting. You can save that, but also when you hit reset, it's going to ask you if you want to save that roast curve so you can open it up again and look at it and you can also export it in various ways as various like JSON files or an image like a PDF. So that's a really quick view of connecting popper, fidgets, computer, artisan, um, but I refer you to the written directions in our coffee library. I think they're way easier to follow. I can have direct links to downloading the software, etc. Um, but let's do a roast. So I actually botched my recording of my first roast there, but it did turn out okay. It's just complicated to try to record this in a meaningful way, as well as actually do it at the same time. So let me try again. I'm going to get things started. I've got 100 grams of Kenya that I'm going to roast. I just want to show you that that submerges the lower um, probe fully in the coffee beans. And we've got our coffee in here. We have our probe set. And this whole setup here, it's, it's wonky. I just taped it down. It's a little distracting, the cables and stuff. And I think if I was doing this all the time, I'd sort of fix a board, maybe put Velcro on the back of those, sort of clamp down the cables. The problem is, you know, a popper type roaster, you've got to invert it. So you have to leave some flexibility for you to, um, to move this and, and toss it out with the thermocouples. So what I've got to do here is I'm going to put in my roast time. I'm going to turn this to off, put in my 10 minute roast time. I've already set this to where the, uh, the roast I want to be. This one o'clock setting corresponds on my watt meter over there to 950 watts more or less. That's what I want to roast at. Then I can just turn this. And... Okay, so what you should notice here is I've clicked the on button here and I have readings. They're a little bit high because I'd already roasted in this. 97 for the environmental temperature in red. 
90 for the uh, uh, bean temperature. And this records a delta, which is going to come down as, as a graph, uh, the difference between these two. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to use that at this point, so I'll just ignore it. Um, but I'm basically ready to go. What I want to do is I click start here first, so it starts recording. Then when I actually start the batch, I'm going to hit this charge button, which means I've put the coffee into the roaster. Uh, it's already in there, but let's just do that at the same time. And we're going. My clock here is going. My clock here is going. I'm going to start a stream, stream, screen recording over here so we can watch this as it goes along. And here, we're going to watch the coffee. Let me see if I can move that into view. We have good bean rotation there. My probes are in the right position. We're going to just leave the top off so we can see this roast. Okay, so now I've brought up my screen recording here. We're coming up on a minute 30 into the roast. You see some light yellowing, a little bit of steam coming off the coffee. And we can see what's going on over here in Artisan as well. We switch between these two views. And down here we have these uh, buttons here. Dry end. That is when coffee turns brown, light brown, yellow to brown. That's going to be your discretion. Uh, first crack start, when you hear the first pop of first crack, which I think is very useful. First crack end, which uh, you may not roast to the end of first crack in an air roast if you want a light roast. And second crack start. You could also adapt these buttons. What I tend generally record is first crack when it becomes rapid. So I record the start when I first hear it, when it becomes rapid, and when it ends. So I'm sure I can adapt these buttons since I'm not going to be roasting to second crack. And drop is when your roast finishes. So right now we're at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Our temperatures are getting up to uh, close to 380 degrees on the bean temperature. We've got quite a difference. We've got a lot of yellowing and browning going on here. Let me center that a little bit better. Let's go in and look at that. We've got good bean agitation, which is really important. And I notice my environmental temperature may be a little bit lower because I don't have the hood on this roaster. We're roasting topless here. So let's fast forward through this roast a little bit. You can skip some parts and see how it goes. But I am going to record the dry end right about, yeah, that's a nice browning. So that's 3 minutes and 20 seconds, 399 degrees, which is awfully close to where we should start hearing the first crack. Okay, so that's first crack start, and I'll record it. 410 degrees at 4 minutes and 22 seconds. It's quite loud snap there. So 410 degrees is a bit higher temp recorded temperature than you'd expect in some other roasters. Like I said, I think that's because it reflects a combination of touching the roasted coffee, the X outside, so it's not internal bean temperature, and the hot air stream that's blowing through it. So there's a bit of a hybridization there and an inaccuracy that is just native to recording bean temperature with a probe. We're now about 5 minutes and 20 seconds. I'm going to use the first crack end button, but I'm actually using it to record the middle of first crack, where I say first crack is fully underway. Now the other trick here is, what about if I make adjustments during the roast? 
how do I log those in? And that I'm just going to need to do in a notepad or uh, on the computer or a notepad, a real notepad, to say at this point I change the wattage to this level or I change the airflow to another level. Now we're at six minutes and 30 seconds, and I'm going to record the end of first crack uh, using uh, the second crack start button. So this is going to be a nice city, city plus roast. It's gone all the way through first crack. We're getting some development time after within the standard seven minute popper roast window. And we've got all this information to look at and see what happened. And there we've just started the cooling cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and click the drop button now to record the end of the roast because technically that is the end of the roast and we can watch the cooling cycle as well. And we'll continue to graph that just out of interest and in how quickly the coffee drops in temperature. So great, we are finishing up a roast. We've recorded it on Artisan. We have this graph that now we can save. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go turn this off and then when we hit reset, it's going to give us the option to save this and we can save it to our hard drive. And what do we do with it? And so I think that's actually a good question and perhaps why it's worth watching this demo if you're considering something like this is it has some value to watch live and to see what's happening with your roast. But you could also have that value just by using a, a manual thermometer and seeing what temperature you're at at any given time. So I don't know if you need this graphical interface to be watching that. And the second thing is, well, what do you do now with this? How is that useful? And I think, you know, maybe some of the possibilities are that you could even print that out and keep it by you while you record another live batch and see if your batch is tracking. There's other ways you can overlay them and to see, well, what happened when I got a really good roast? Um, what did I do and, and what was happening with the coffee? But if you don't have any real use for this, then maybe this whole process isn't for you. I think it's pretty cool. I think it looks really interesting. It's kind of fun to study. And I think that's totally valid to just enjoy the process of doing this, enjoy the process of recording a little sort of, you know, home experiment. If you didn't think you're good at electronics, you can do a basic thing. You can extend the functionality of a machine and, you know, have a little fun with it. So. Those are some valid reasons to do this, is it's enjoyable. And um, I just wanted to share that with you, see if this is something you wanna do. And we're gonna have all the list of materials and the process to get this started. Um, I, I used it from the fidget site, we'll sort of work off of that. Uh, the artisan site with the fidgets interface. How you set it up, it's very easy. And um, thanks a lot for watching.